What is driving it? What over 95% of all suicide terrorist attacks around the world have in common is not religion, but a specific strategic objective to compel a democratic state to withdraw combat forces. I don't mean advisors with sidearms. I mean tanks, fighter aircraft, and armor units from territory that terrorists consider to be their homeland or prize greatly. From Lebanon to the West Bank then, and as you will see, to Iraq and Afghanistan today, every suicide terrorist campaign has been waged by terrorist groups for this strategic objective. Very, very important. Now, to be clear, this does not account for every suicide attack. It does account for over 95% of all the suicide terrorism we've experienced around the world since 1980. This chart looks at the nine disputes that comprise the 95% of the suicide attacks during this period. And if you let your eyes go up and down the middle, you'll see that territory, important to the terrorists, is central to each and every one of these campaigns. Let me again talk about Lebanon, the first one, uh, because you're familiar with Hezbollah. Well, in June 1982, Hezbollah did not exist. In June 1982, Israel invaded southern Lebanon with 78,000 combat soldiers, 3,000 tanks and armored vehicles. One month later, Hezbollah was born. Then, over the course of the next year, and for reasons we're still not quite sure about, Hezbollah began to experiment with suicide attack. And the fourth suicide attack was against the U.S. Marines in Beirut in October 1983 that killed 241 of our Marines, the loss of one bomber. That's 10% of the force. 10% of the force. The same day, a Hezbollah suicide uh, attacker struck the French troops, killing 58 French soldiers. Again, about 10% of the force, the loss of one bomber. Well, Ronald Reagan, no pacifist, just a few months later, decided to withdraw all American combat forces from Lebanon rather than face the risk of another suicide attack. And then the French left when we did, and Israel withdrew first in 1986 to a six-mile security zone in the southern part of Lebanon. And then in May 2000, the Israeli army left Lebanon altogether. And what's significant about the withdrawals of those combat forces is that Hezbollah suicide attackers did not follow the Americans to New York or the French to Paris or even the Israelis to Tel Aviv. Do you know how many Hezbollah or any Lebanese suicide attacks have occurred since May 2000 when the Israeli army left southern Lebanon? Zero. Not a single one. Not even during the summer of 2006 when you'll remember there was a three-week air war between Hezbollah and Israel. Now think about that, ladies and gentlemen. If this is just about a bunch of Islamic radicals looking for any old excuse for a quick trip to heaven, we should have seen hundreds of Hezbollah suicide attackers in the summer of 2006, and we didn't get a single one. Now this is a, a pattern of the onset and ending of suicide attacks in Lebanon that cannot be accounted for by Islamic fundamentalism. After all, Hezbollah is still an Islamic fundamentalist group. And it fits to the month, to the month, foreign occupation. Foreign occupation. We could go through each of those at that level of detail. But what most people want to know about is Al-Qaeda. This research was the first to collect the complete set of the 71 individuals who actually killed themselves to carry out attacks for Osama. Of those 71, we know the names, nationality, and other socioeconomic data of 67. Not quite all, but almost all. And the largest number, 34, come from Saudi Arabia, the large majority from the Arabian Peninsula, where the United States first began to station combat forces 
in 1990. It's important to underscore, even to an educated audience, that 1990 was the watershed year in our military deployment to the Arabian Peninsula. Yes, before 1990, the United States had a few hundred advisors there, uh, mostly Marines with sidearms standing guard in front of an embassy, but no tanks, no fighter aircraft, no armor units going all the way back to World War II. We put those forces in to kick Saddam out of Kuwait. We kicked him out of Kuwait in March 91 and never left. From that day on, March 91 on, we kept between 12 and 30,000 combat soldiers stationed on the Arabian Peninsula. And the Al-Qaeda attacks start five years later in 1995. Moreover, notice where the Al-Qaeda suicide attackers are not coming from, Iran. Surely an Islamic fundamentalist population, three times the population size of Saudi Arabia. No, Al-Qaeda suicide attackers. Sudan. Sudan is an Islamic fundamentalist country, uh, about the same population size um, as Saudi Arabia, and with a brand of Islamic fundamentalism so congenial to Osama he chose to live there for three years in the 1990s? No, Al-Qaeda, suicide attackers. Bangladesh, one of the largest Islamic fundamentalist populations on the planet, over 110 million people, excuse me, um, and no, Al-Qaeda, suicide attackers. Um, just to come up, uh, if this was about Islamic fundamentalism, we would see, ladies and gentlemen, a very different pattern in who was producing the suicide terrorists. I'm glad to go through and actually talk about the specifics case by case by case on the other ones. So, but let me again keep coming back to the heart of this. Because so far, we've just talked about the data. But before I just keep talking more about data, I want to let you listen to the, the Al-Qaeda suicide attackers themselves. I want to show you martyr videos from four of the actual 9-11 hijackers. I want to show you two martyr videos from two of the July 2005 suicide bombers for Al-Qaeda in London. Um, these uh, videos were made um, uh, before they did their suicide attack, <laughs> given to Al-Qaeda, and then Al-Qaeda, as you'll see, um, put in some extra pictures. They put in like pictures of the buildings falling on the, with the 9-11 guys so that you can associate them more tightly with the attack. Um, but these are their last video will testimonials. And we put them together so you can follow this a little easier because uh, with uh, their subtitles. The four 9-11 guys, they're Saudis. They're going to speak to you in Arabic. So there's subtitles underneath you can uh, more easily follow. The 7-7 uh, bombers, uh, the July 2005 bombers from London, they're Brits. They're going to speak to you in English. So we will bookend the 9-11 uh, uh, the guys. We'll start with one Brit, go to the four 9-11 guys, and then go to another Brit. This is how our ethical stances are dictated. Um, your de democratically elected governments continuously perpetuate atrocities against my people all over the world. And your support of them makes you directly responsible, just as I am directly responsible for protecting and avenging my Muslim brothers and sisters. Until we feel security, you will be our targets. And until you stop the bombing, gassing, imprisonment and torture of my people, we will not stop this fight. We are at war and I am a soldier. <laughs> إن أرادت سلامة جيوشها وشعبها فلتسحب جميع قواتها من بلاد المسلمين ولتخرج من جميع أراضيهم وإلا فلتنتظر الرجال ولتجهز دوابيتها وتحفر قبورا لأبنائها ولتستعد لأن تذوق الغيل والوبال القادم على قياداتها وشعبها بإذن الله وإن من المصائب العظام التي أصيبت بها الأمة الإسلامية هي احتلال بلاد الحرمين من قبل الجيوش اليهودية الصليبية وعلى رأسها أمريكا 
وإن هذا الاختلال أكبر في أمة وحارسة في تاريخ الإسلام فلم تكن جزيرة العرب من هذه الجيوش الأمريكية الجبارة التي تمطر أساطيرها بحار الجزيرة وتفضل طائراتها سماء المنطقة وتدب فيانقها حرق ترابها أسألكم بالله تعالى ماذا يجري اليوم في بلاد المسلمين؟ احتلالا واضح لا غبار عليه وأنتم أيها العلماء تقولون ماذا وتقرونه حتى لبلاد العربين؟ كيف لا؟ ونحن قد مهمنا في بيت ربنا ومسجد نبينا وقبلتنا ومقدساتنا واحتللنا من قبل اليهود والنصارى وهي أعظم مصيبة بعد مصيبة وفاة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم ومما يزيدها عظما أن هذا الاحتلال تم بالتعاون مع الحكام المرتدين وجزيرة العرب منذ أن خلق الله صحراءها وحفها ببحارها لم يلهمها مثل هذا البلاء قط فإنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون وما بلاد الحرمين فيه من احتلال وتربي هو مخطط من اليهود والنصارى وعلى رأسهم أمريكا دمرها الله التي ما نزل بالإسلام والمسلمين من مصيبة إلا كانت سببا فيها When you have witnessed now is only the beginning of a series of attacks which inshallah will intensify and continue until you pull all your troops out of Afghanistan and Iraq until you stop all financial and military support to the US and Israel and until you release all Muslim prisoners from Belmarsh and your other concentration camps and know that if you fail to comply with this then know that this war will never stop and that we are ready to give our lives 100 times over for the cause of Islam you will never experience peace until our children in Palestine, our mothers and sisters in Kashmir, our brothers in Afghanistan and Iraq feel peace. So what you are seeing is powerful evidence that the main cause of suicide terrorism is foreign occupation. And foreign occupation is the main cause of both secular and religious suicide terrorism. Suicide terrorism is the lung cancer of terrorism. The smoking is foreign occupation. It's the trigger. Of the people who get lung cancer, 85% have smoked. Of suicide terrorist attacks, over 95% are in response to foreign occupation. If anything, the empirical linkage between suicide terrorism and foreign occupation is tighter than between smoking and lung cancer. This is a very important empirical connection. It's important because if we ignore it, then we'll either have policies which will be irrelevant or simply make the problem worse. This is the key thing that comes out of the data. This is why it's so important whether that data, every single attack is there and every single attack actually occurred and why so many important folks are taking it into account and you're seeing it, I will venture to say, and we'll talk more about Libya, even as we play this out with Libya as time goes on. This is a very important thing for us, ladies and gentlemen, to pay attention to.